Well, good afternoon and welcome again to the Synergy Enterprise Fundamentals. Thanks everybody for taking time out of their day. Um, I'm joined by Mike Leahy on the call and I know he wants to say hello in just a second. Um, on behalf of all of us, we hope that you're staying safe and staying well and uh, taking care of each other because it's kind of a crazy time in the world. But I think um, perhaps if you're not already using Synergy or using very much of it, you'll get some great ideas for how to help share information and collaborate better within your companies during during this un unique time that we're experiencing. So Mike, do you wanna speak for a minute and say hello to folks? Yeah, just thank you all for, for joining today. We can all shake hands over the phone and, uh, and and stay safe. So yeah, we appreciate that. There's appreciate you taking the time today. There's a lot going on with the Synergy software and um, Anne and uh, uh, John Clark on our staff uh, are both experts and years of experience. So I think this will be a good informative uh, session today and I'm handling the questions. So if you want to ask a question privately, you can key it in or uh, if you'd like to have a question for the whole group, uh, let me know and and, um, and and we'll handle that question. So thanks for joining again today. Back to you, Ann. Okay, thanks, Mike. So we want to talk today ultimately about collaboration and accountability and how people work today, not just in light of, of the COVID-19 issues, but in, in general as companies have multiple locations and have people working from home more or working at remote locations. So first of all, without I'm not going to read the slide here, but you can you can read it yourself, obviously. But I want you to think about how you collaborate today and some of the issues that you have with that. And these are just I mean, there's lots of other issues than what I brought up here. But I just want you to ask, how's this all working for you when you're trying to to use email and, and virtual or in-person meetings and phone calls. Um, it, it becomes very challenging to discuss things and to make sure that people know what they're responsible for and whether people replied to emails and, and all of that. And what we have found is that small and mid-sized companies especially need a very high level of visibility and account of, accountability because they don't have a lot of people to throw at challenges and opportunities and problems. So they need to be proactive and they need to not be reactive if they really want to succeed and grow and they need to be agile. And so they need better ways to, to communicate. Um, it's, it's hard enough when you're down the hallway from somebody and asking them questions, it gets to be doggone difficult when they're miles away in their home office or in a different time zone and, and all of that. So I think it's becoming important imperative for companies to use a phrase, well, we're using the phrase, complete your ERP by using tools that foster collaboration and encourage accountability and let you stay ahead of the curve instead of feeling like you're behind the curve all the time. Um, customers are becoming more and more demanding. Supply chains are changing as we sit here. Um, they just are becoming very agile and you have to be able to respond and anticipate where things are going. So um, one of the biggest things that plagues companies are islands of information. Um, and we see this everywhere. Excel is a fabulous tool to do certain things, but unfortunately sometimes you don't even realize how many people in the organization might be using it to augment information to store additional information that no one else has except the person who has the Excel sheet. Same thing happens with Access, which we haven't seen as much lately, but some people still use Microsoft Access. And uh, they, they are great tools for doing certain things, but they don't share information very well. So think about the islands of information you have, and at some point you may want to query people in your organization to find out whether or not you've got islands you don't even know about and data that's not being shared effectively. So that, that's kind of where we're gonna to focus today on basics of Synergy and some of the information that you can have there. And especially if you have Macola 10 or you're contemplating going to it and bringing it all together, you, can, you have a great tool in Synergy that will give you far more information than you have in just the Macola tables that we're all 
are used to working with. So I've got another slide here. It's just got some email addresses, but that's just A. Hainer, J. Clark, and Terry Lanham. So that's really all I wanted to show for slides. So let's get into Synergy now, and let's talk about the ways that it can bring things together for you and the kind of information that it has that you don't have in the McCola back end that runs the operational side of the business. So we know that ERP systems do a great deal of information with inventory and they do your billing and they do your payables and all the rest of that that everybody knows. But how do you really keep track of things that are going on with various accounts? When you've added Synergy on top of the McCola database, you get a whole new view into things and a whole new capability that you didn't have before. So if you've never seen some of this before, we aren't gonna go into this in any depth, but Synergy allows you to create different kinds of accounts. So everybody knows we have customers and everybody knows we have vendors, but when you go to create accounts, your sales team may be talking to people that are prospects or leads, or you may have gotten even at an at a activity like we used to go to trade shows, which were suspended right now, but you may have gotten a list of suspects, people that you think might want to do business with you. So when you start your sales process to acquire new customers, you can be tracking those people in Synergy before they actually make a purchase from you. And you would do that by defining them as either a lead or possibly a prospect. Typically a lead is someone who's maybe been to your website but hasn't bought anything. A prospect is probably someone you're already talking to, uh, but you haven't yet sold them anything. Now notice here that when I actually create a customer account, and by the way, by creating the customer account here, it will automatically be in Macola as well. So I have a centralized way to add accounts. Notice that there's something sitting over here to the right and it's a policy document. We're not gonna get deeply into this, but what this is, is a document that's stored in Synergy that tells someone the details of what they should set up when they create a customer account. So Synergy has a great capability for you to start documenting your processes within itself so that when a new person is learning the system and they're adding a customer, they can actually open a document and get your work instructions, for example. I know several companies that are using Synergy to do this. So they let the system document itself. So let's just talk for a minute about this particular type of account. This is an account screen and it's got lots and lots of fields. And again, we're not gonna step through all of these, but I want to point out the fact that there are different types of information stored here and that depending on who you are in the organization, you could see different information or be allowed to only see information and not to change other information. And this screen is a very flexible, malleable screen, if you will, um, because I can add fields, take fields off, design new fields, add user-defined fields, and, and it can just be a very powerful, flexible way to store lots of information about your customers that you don't have really the capability to do in Macola itself. So I have I have lots and lots of capabilities here. Now let's let's go take a look at some of my accounts and then we'll dig for in just a minute or two a little bit deeper into this. So I've got all kinds of different customer accounts here, but Cozy Kitchen is one that I deal with all the time for demonstration purposes. So this one has been blocked and set to inactive. So there are no services allowed for this. And that's a really handy capability that you can use um, if you have customers that you're having difficulties with and you really want people to make sure they understand that there's some kind of a, a problem with that customer. So when I click on my accounts, what this is doing is bringing up anyone that I am the manager for. And again, this is a new concept for people that haven't used a lot of Synergy, but not only do people have managers, but accounts can have managers. And by granting someone that ability, it automatically becomes their account and they have some special privileges with that account. So when I click on this left menu pane for my accounts, I see all the people that I am the manager of. So let's go look at someone who now is a lead that is an active lead. And I may or may not 
associate them with other people, but I can do that because as you can see here, there are some subsidiary accounts that are attached to this. Again, this is a new concept that you don't usually see someone using in Macola itself, but you can use here. So when I click on the subsidiaries on the account card, I go and see that we have two individual locations that are tied to that parent account. And so now I know who their parent is because it's tied there, and I know what agency they work with. And again, I can see in this case that someone else is managing this particular account. So this is someone that's probably in that particular location calling on these people, talking to them, or it's an inside salesperson, could be that as well. So we have the capability to have lots of different relationships that get built as you talk to people and manage them and deal with them. Same thing with your suppliers. If you've got suppliers, you've got buyers that work with those people, and you need to be able to keep track of who the accounts are that you're dealing with and the contacts that you have. So here we've got a single contact. If I go to add another contact, because now I've met someone else, now I can go in and fill out a contact card. So we end up again with lots of user-defined fields that can be created here, and we can have lots of information that I don't just have as I go into Macola to set up an address for someone or a destination for someone. So when we look at when we look at contacts, they have notice that they have workflow that can be associated and documents and individual data. There's also something that's been added in just the last year or two to Synergy, which is the ability to link a contact to more than one account. So if there are those of you in the group in the organizations today that sell through channel management or sell through branch branches and have multiple branches that you're dealing with, you may have someone that you want to associate with the parent account, but they need to be associated with a local uh, branch office or something too, and you don't have to add that contact in twice. You can link this contact to multiple companies. So Hope right now is linked to this particular account, the LaPeep West, but I can add her as a contact to another account and I can go look up that account and we'll just do this quickly and, and say that she is doing something with the Bagel Heaven people. And now it wants to know if she has the same email, the same mobile and the same fax number at that. And she may or may not, depending on the relationship. But now I've got information stored once for her and she's associated with both of those accounts in the system. So contacts accounts they're all they're all very operational to your daily business as you're dealing with different kinds of people so you've got different kinds of accounts prospects and leads that haven't purchased from you customers that are currently purchasing or have purchased you've also got an associate account an associate account is someone that you really don't buy or sell buy from or sell to um, but you do business with them you collaborate with them in some other way. So you can create accounts that don't go into Macola, don't have to live on the Macola side of things, but you do have the capability to track contacts and track actions and information and documents with those people. Now, for those of you that have used Synergy, you see something that you don't see during most Synergy systems, and this is very deliberate. Um, I wanted to show you a capability that, that is in the system to track what Synergy calls projects. But for another demo that I did for another company, they wanted to call them agencies. And so there are projects and there are resellers in the system. And when I go to create a reseller type account, they have relationships within Synergy to customers. So they may manage an account. So in this case, I created... I changed the term used for reseller to agency. You might have people that are called distributors um, instead of resellers, and you want to call them a distributor. Synergy has the flexibility for you to change words and map them to be the word that you want used because you have some different terminology in your business. So that's what I did here. When I'm creating an agency, it's really a reseller account 
that has special capabilities, but I renamed it to agencies because it was more intuitive for another customer that was taking a look at this. So this is just a demonstration here of the ability to change words in Synergy. And, and that gives you lots of power to make this user-friendly and easy for your people to use with the nomenclature that you use in your organization. Okay, so we've talked just a little bit about accounts. Let's talk about how we interact with those accounts. One of the things that plagues a lot of people today is the fact that they spend a lot of time in their email inbox. And when an, when an email comes in, you need to then generally, oftentimes, take some action with that. What Synergy allows you to do is to take that email and load it into Synergy, and if the person that sent the email is already in Synergy with that address, then it will attach to that account and that individual automatically. So you can bring emails up and then you can also attach it to requests. So we need to talk now a little bit about requests because requests are what begin to tie things together in Synergy. They tie actions and responsibility and accountability to the various kinds of accounts that you de deal with. So let's talk, let's talk about creating requests. So if I'm having a conversation, uh, let's just go back to one of the LaPeep accounts. If I'm having a conversation with these people and Rosie has made some kind of an inquiry, I can be looking at her contact card and from here I can actually create a request which is gonna be some kind of an action item. Maybe I'm going to go visit her. Maybe I'm going. Maybe she's asked me to quote something. Um, maybe she's asked me to do some kind of of a delivery or an installation, something like that. Um, or maybe I just need to to make some notes while I'm talking to her on the telephone. So those are those are there are predefined requests that come out of the box. And when you get a request opened up, it's already attached to me as the person the company that she works for and the person that I'm talking to. And I can now start to document the phone call that I had. Whatever it was, you know. And I have a, extensive notes that I can put down here. Now, if I had sent an email back to Rosie, I would have to remember that I sent it and I would have to know what I was supposed to do after that. In this particular case, this is just a real simple little note, and I'm going to create it, and it's going to go into my workflow for me to follow up because I have something to do, right? So I'm going to create this task or this request, if you will, and it's now going to move into my workflow because these are actions I need to take with various people. So here's my telephone note that I need to do something. And instead of having just sent an email to her and not knowing that I sent it or having to go hunt around and sent mail, I can see that it's new. It's bolded. So it's unread. If I click my unread messages, just like email, I can see the things I haven't even looked at yet. And I can go back into that task and I can make additional notes about things that I did. Now, one of the drawbacks again about email is that you don't really know if you've tasked someone else to do something, whether they've actually even looked at it or done something with it. But one of the wonderful things about Synergy is that when you task people to do things, you can tell if they have opened that workflow that you created for them. So one of the actions that you've got or one of the icons sorry that you've got up at the top are data logs so that you can see if someone has done something so if you're in any doubt about the fact that you've tasked someone to do something based on action that they should have taken you can you can easily tell if they have done something or haven't done something um, notice too that there's two tabs here one is just basic information but then there's related information that I could put on here and so I could set a follow-up date for this. Um, Synergy has the ability also to remind you when things haven't been followed up on by turning them red. Um, so I could see that if I'm supposed to respond to certain kinds of activities, 
um, if I'm supposed to respond to an email or I'm supposed to respond to a request for a quotation in a short time, if I haven't done that, then I can be reminded that I really need to take action on this. So we can we can get that that kind of helpfulness that, again, you don't have just by sending emails to people or having meetings with people. So tasks and, and requests and workflow become a very operative part of how the system works. So let's let's talk about let's talk about how we actually manage certain things like that. Um, oftentimes we have tasks that are related to several steps that have to happen, and Synergy lets you do that. Also, it allows you to kick off some kind of workflow, and when it gets to a certain point, it needs to kick off some other workflow for someone else. So, for instance, as an example here at our company. Um, one of us is talking to a customer, we upload the email that they sent us, and then we have a conversation and maybe we're doing a support call. And in that support call, I find out that they're interested possibly in our dashboard project. So I want, I want Terry Lanham then to send a quote to that person. So I create a task for Terry and I can copy the original task that I started with, I could take the telephone note and I could copy it to a new request so that it would um, inherit lots of information. So let's just see, let's do, oh, uh, we've got lots and lots of things here. What do we wanna do? Let's, let's just, we'll just add another one. It's gonna inherit Rosie and LaPeep, and maybe I don't want those notes on it, and I'm gonna create a new request now and in this case, maybe I want to assign it for Terry, or in this case, notice that it's going to go to the role that was attached, which is the customer manager. So remember we talked a few minutes ago about when we create accounts, we establish managers for them. If Terry's the customer manager for LaPeep Wildwood, then he automatically gets this request because that relationship's already been created. So it knows that it, he should be, that. Terry should be talking to Rosie about this quotation that she wants. So I can put some more notes in here. And call her back. And it would go to the customer manager for that account. So another capability that comes into play with all of this then are documents. Because when you send an email, that's a document to somebody. When you receive an email, that's a document. When Terry creates that quotation, it's a document. So we can also attach documents. So let's go back to our account one more time because it's we're very account-centric with this. So let's go look at this account. And Terry now wants to create a document to attach for them. So in this little documents link here, we can see that there's already been one document that's sent to them, but I could create a new document right from here, or I could upload a document from Word or from Excel, and I could tell the system exactly what kind of a document it was, because these are document categories, if you will. These are types of documents within different organizational areas. And you can see all kinds of different classifications, if you will, um, for, for documents. And again, things come out of the box, but it's easy to create new ones that fit your particular organization. So if Terry's going to look for a specific kind and she's gonna send, he's gonna send some kind of a proposal, he creates a proposal document, which can have a layout that attaches to it, or he can simply grab an Excel sheet, if that was his proposal, and attach it here and then he can put a subject up at the top of the line here that says that this is the quotation for this new purchase that she's interested in buying. Um, so there's there are all kinds of all kinds of ways to use the document system. Um, we've done work with folks that actually do all their ISO documents, and this is just taking a long time, so we're gonna we're gonna just talk about that. Well, I don't know why this is sitting, but it is. Um, We've done work with people to set all their ISO documentation up, all their standard business procedures, their HR documents, um, which for most people requires um, 
some real thinking because they want to secure things. So documents, requests, accounts all have security levels assigned to them, which allow you to then control who can see things and at what times they can see things. So that's a big that's a big issue that that needs discussion. If you're going to put sensitive information in the system, it's built to handle it, but you have to give it some serious thought if you're going to do that. So anyway, we have documents, we have action items, we have accounts, and then we also have a, a concept called projects. And projects allow you to link all the things we've talked about already, the accounts, the contacts, the kind of action items you might have, documentation into a project, which then allows you to manage that project, record time against it if you want to, record actions against it, helps you decide who has the ball with things right now. Um, there are, are customers that use it to manage their delivery of new products when they're developing new products. So if you're if you've got a new product you're going to launch and there's engineering that needs to get involved and sales needs to get involved and marketing needs to get involved um, and you're you going to bring on a new line or something like that. Um, many people need to get involved and so you can actually create a project in Synergy and you can attach people as members of the project and attach documents to that project and it can be kind of a holding place for all of that information so that you can easily find it. So not all the work that you do is just tied to accounts. Some of it's tied to internal initiatives, and those initiatives um, are, are very easily handled by using projects. Now, I called them programs here for a previous demo, so I've got, I've got some programs. So let's just go look at this as a dashboard for the projects that, again, I'm the manager of or that I'm involved with in some way. So I've got open requests. I've don't have any documents attached, but I could. When I move and look at that, we have yet another card. So we've seen account cards and contact cards. We've seen document cards and requests. Now we have a project card or a program card. I call this program, but it's a project. And it has a manager and it can have different entries made against it. Again, it can have requests attached to it and it can have accounts attached to it. So if we go look at, at accounts, I can link link perhaps outside people that are our customers that are going to be involved in this project with us. So these are accounts that we have and, and people that we've associated with those accounts. So they're all tied, they're all tied to a project. Um, and again, I can add documents to that project to document what we're doing. And here I've got um, a request that's tied to the project. And I can report on this project to see who's been involved and what level they've been involved at. So it's just another way to basically organize and pull information together for initiatives that you're, that you're doing in the organization. So now we can integrate basically employees, workflow, documents, projects, accounts, all of those things. So let's let's talk about the employee side of thing for a minute because we haven't really talked about that. So over on the side here, I have another link called My People. So I'm going to click on My People. So this is me. That's the role that I've got. And these are the people that report directly to me. And they're the ones that I'm directing as a small team. So you can see they've got different titles. So there's a record in Synergy for each one of these coworkers that I have. If I want to see who I report to, then we can look at that. And I report to John. And John's got Nico and me reporting directly to him. So if I click on my name, I'm now going to go to another card in the system, which is an HR card. So now this is keeping track of information relative to me as the employee of this company. And notice that, again, there's links to the accounts that I manage, the documents that I've created, um, various projects or programs that I might be involved with. And this is where roles are defined that determine the kind of functionality that I can perform within Synergy. So if you understand how the roles work, 
um, in Synergy and how the security levels work, once you understand those two crucial pieces of information, you can tailor the system to work in the way that you want to. So you have to create records for the people that are going to use the tool that are in the organization and create relationships amongst them too, subordinates, managers, the job groups that they do, things like that. So this is yet another kind of information that gets fleshed out within Synergy that you don't have as much of in Macola. So let me pause for breath for a minute, Mike, and see if you've got any questions from people. Um, I do. Um, well, just just uh, I think you're captivating everybody's attention, and they they don't want to type in anything. Um, I did want to I did want to mention there were two two things that came up. Uh, can you tell everybody what version of Synergy you're running? And I think that probably will bring up the subject of the the, the fact that there's two parallel universes for Synergy. So could you comment on that for a minute? Okay, I can. Um, and and I, for a technical reason, I'm not using the version that I was hoping to use. I'm actually using a slightly newer version than probably most people have, but I'm staying away from the functionality that they might not have in it. So I am actually using the slightly newer exact version of Synergy, but I'm doing it because the Macola 10 version that I have, I don't I haven't worked with it enough in our data to be able to use it as easily. I've used this version more, and so I've created more accounts and created more data. But this does not look substantially different, and what I'm showing you is all the functionality that Macola 10 people would have. So there are two versions. I, I guess what similar. I, yeah. yeah, I think the, the comment I wanted you to embellish on is that um, the there is also a newer version that's available from Exact, right. but not available from um, from ECI from that's from Macola, and that's a long a long subject um, to discuss why that could have happened. Um, but um, if you'd like to have a side conversation with Anne, you know, we'll be happy to to talk about that. Yeah. Um, the comment I wanted to make was that. You're looking at some really exciting things here, and I just wanted to mention that um, for those of you who are currently Pulse dashboard users, that all of this information, we have developed links between the Pulse dashboard software and the Synergy software, and it's not part of the standard uh, software, standard uh, dashboard software, but um, the uh, information about especially about uh, uh, tasks, the, the workflow is what it's called there, uh, and being able to see who has what tasks um, and what the status is and being able to look at it by project or however you want to look at it. So I uh, just want to mention that, that for any of you who are using our Pulse dashboard software, this information is all available. And for example, we do some fancy things. Uh, we can actually, from Pulse dashboard, launch a request, launch a workflow that's in Synergy. So that'll be another demonstration, but um, just wanted to mention that. Now, somebody else just had another question here. And let me see if I can read it here. Um, I think it's another, I'll answer your question um, privately in here. Um, it's not one I think it's going to require a long answer. So, okay. okay, back to you, Anne. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, so we're we're talking here again about the ability in the tool to add information to get it out of those islands that you have. Because what really happens is when you start to integrate your employees and their work and your documents and your projects and your accounts. You make this information then available no matter where you are. So right now, physically, I want, I'm going to describe how Leahy uses this. Right now, I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. Mike's in Cincinnati. We have people in Missouri. We have people in Indiana. They can access Synergy without any kind of a VPN. They can access it directly through their browser. 
to some kind of a connection that we would secure by the fact that they have to have proper credentials to get in. So we all use the tool from the various locations we have, some right in the office perhaps, others that are using it remotely. But there's other options than just sitting in front of your computer to access this as well. And in fact, there's a video out on our YouTube channel that shows this because there are mobile applications that work on tablets and phones that will allow you to access Synergy information also. So if you're on the sales side or the marketing side or people that are that are on the move or, or used to be on the move, maybe you're not as on the, on the move as you used to be, but that are traditionally on the move and, and calling on accounts in person, um, then there are, are mobile apps that you can use as well. So you don't just have to access, you, you're not limited is what I'm saying. You're not limited to the browser that you use. You're not limited to the tool that you use. If you have an iPhone, that's fine. If you have an Android, that's fine. If you have an, an Apple tablet or an Android tablet, there are apps in the app stores that are free that you can acquire and, and get to a great deal of information from Synergy about the accounts and the documents and the requests that are, that are put in for you. So what happens with all of this then is that you get much better integration between the people that you're working with and the accounts that you're trying to take care of, your customers, your vendors, your, your other relationships that you have, which means you're going to be able to respond faster to people because you don't have to wait to hear back on an email. You don't necessarily have to wait for somebody to even open their email. Um, this is going to, I believe, generate higher levels of satisfaction at every level from employees through customers, suppliers, and, and although we've been through a lot of changes in the last few months, we know that people's buying habits are changing, but happy customers that are getting the attention that they want spend more money, and happy customers drive happy employees, and happy employees are less likely to be frustrated and leave your organization because they can collaborate better with their counterparts. So I think the top line and the bottom line ends up increasing for people as they flexibly can eliminate disconnections that they have today. So you can eliminate these islands of information. You can wrap business processes around your mission critical transactions, and you can flesh out the kind of way that you really want to do business with people, with Synergy. Um, We've we've seen it work in all different kinds of organizations, um, and there there are many ways that you can get started with it. So if you're not using it already, you need to look at ways that you're not collaborating effectively with people. Perhaps it's on projects. Perhaps it's on just account management. Perhaps it has to do with purchasing and suppliers. Perhaps you need to to get your HR department out of a file cabinet where it's locked up to every night and get it into some place that people can interact properly with it. Um, they're just all different kinds of ways that you can, that you can, can use this. Um, there are links to Outlook. There are links to Word. There are links to Excel so that when I create documents there or when I'm emailing people, they can automatically or on demand come up into Synergy for you and be stored and be associated um, we're working with a customer right now in Iowa that has lots of customers. Um, I don't know, thousands of them. I'm not even sure if they're on the call today, but um, they are tracking all their orders. All their Mercola orders are visible through Synergy. All their Mercola quotes are visible through Synergy. Um, and the follow-up that they're doing with those quotes, to turn those quotes into orders, those are all part of people's daily workflow that they go to look at. When I, when I started the demo, I'm going to back up to this workspace here. This is an extremely simple widget-driven workspace. This isn't a fancy workspace, um, uh, which John Clark on our team could create, and maybe some of you have with Macola 10, because it ships with a lot of workspaces out of the box. But this is just a simple workspace that I've created knowing almost nothing um, that allows me to see the accounts I've recently touched that allows me to look at helpful documents and I determine which documents I want to appear here that lets me see a sales funnel for sales opportunities. 
if I'm in the sales department. So th th this was just an example of, of, a, of a very simple workspace and I can edit and change it by just hitting the little plus sign down here. And this, this all just comes right out of the box with, with the tool, the ability to do these things. So, all right, Mike, have you got any other questions? I do. The questions are coming in faster than I can answer them right now. But Terry Lanham uh, on our Leahy consulting staff wanted to mention uh, something. Uh, but before he does, um, the general question that's coming up is um, I'm, I'm sending a, re a request to do something, whatever it might be, order something, get approval for something. And uh, part of what Anne maybe can explain in more detail is that it's expecting that along with that request that there be different sign-offs and it mm -hmm. might be one sign-off, it might be the boss, it might be a coworker. Mm -hmm. uh, that that sign-off might trigger something in event manager to create something. Um, so sure. um, th there's a little bit of work that needs to be uh, completed or thought through for each request. So maybe you can comment just briefly on that, Anne. Yeah, there's, there's, out of the box, when you create new requests in Synergy, again, you have a, a, a library of requests that come with the system, but they can easily be tailored in order to accommodate the steps that you need and the flow that you need. So, so you have to think about the process that you go through for different types of tasks. Um, the other thing that's extremely helpful is being able to, what Mike was, Mike was talking about a minute ago, is if you have multiple people that need to get involved, you might need to use Event Manager for some of it, or you might simply need to create what I call chained requests or process requests, where I can have different activities happen on the request and then have that trigger other actions that need to be taken. Um, I... I could illustrate that with opportunities, but I don't know if we want to get into opportunities because that's... Well, some of this, this is probably more detailed, but I think we can circle back um, uh, offline. But I think the idea is just to communicate that there's a setup that's needed yes. to make this really work, uh, but, really but, customized. Now, and just to give you an idea, in our company, we started using this years ago. We didn't know anything about the software. We didn't have Ann with us and John with us at the time. So we just kind of threw it out there and it didn't work right. Um, you know, the things weren't getting signed off or assigned right, but uh, it was just because we hadn't, you know, we, we did not have it set up right. But the, but we the, do now. But the, yeah, we do now. But the, but the setups are, are not difficult. You basically no. have, have, to, have to determine who should do things at what point and what information they should see. So, I mean, for instance, for instance, if I make a request, if I, if I kick off a request to request some vacation time, Let's just do something that everybody does, right? Or at least we hope you do. So I want to find a vacation request, right? And also, well, Anne, as you're that, thinking, getting prepared for that, people are asking about how do I know what the status is? How do I know if it's been completed or ah, not? Okay. Um, okay. That, that's, a, that's a fabulous question. So I ought to be able to take some time off here. Okay. okay. So... I'm going to I'm going to take a vacation. And again, notice that it's it's going to go to the manager, my manager, who we saw was John, right? So just taking some time off and when do I want to go? Well, it's not going to start today, but it's going to start next Monday and it's going to go through Friday. I'll take, take the whole week off and I'm going to be off for my typical working hours from nine o'clock till five o'clock. Okay, and I did that deliberately because it's gonna calculate the amount of time I'm gonna take off. So notice the security level, by the way, because not everybody should see that necessarily that I'm going on vacation. So there's a very deliberate security level um, here that defines this. And notice all these little linkages too, that it's gonna go on various kinds of calendars because I've specified that the request should. So right now it's going into my queue and I'm gonna enter it, but I'm just gonna go take a look here at the request that I've created and there's that vacation. And now it's sitting in John Clark's workflow. So he has to approve this next. And then there's a flag that's set 
on the definition for this request that says, tell Ann when John approves it. Or if John says, I don't think so, um, I'm, you know, need, need here, let's do this. Let's, let's just become John for a minute so that we can actually do this properly. So we're going to jump into, yep, we're going to leave that request just so you can see this, because this is, this is another very interesting thing. For certain people in the organization, they can become other people in order, especially for testing purposes. So this is John's workspace, and we're going to go here, and we have a vacation that has to be approved. Um, oh, my delegation didn't well, work. While you're here, while you're here, and show these that that action column or the status column. Um, People. What are you asking me to do, Mike? You want me to, to, oh, you want me to use the wrench to add additional columns to the view? No, no, that people want to see, how do I know if something has been completed or not? How do I know where, oh, where it is in because, the process? Because there's, a, there's an action step right here. This action is visible here. So I know that something's been created, but it hasn't been approved or, or so it needs to be approved. So the action here says approve. So I'll just, I'm just going to, approve someone else's vacation. So let's, cause I, I manage people. So I manage George Jetson. So it's in my court. I have not yet approved it. If I don't want to approve it and tell George that he can't take those days off, I can make a note down here and tell him why, and I can reject it. And it'll bounce back to George's workflow saying, sorry, George, you can't have the day off. Or if I go ahead and approve it here, I can I, I do that and it'll bounce to George and say your vacation's been approved. So he'll be notified. So that's that's just an example of that's easy two step, not very many steps. Yeah, yes, you can go, no, you can't, that kind of thing. Um, same thing with expense reports. Again, people process expense reports here. Uh, they process all kinds of HR related things. So once I approve this. So let's just go ahead and approve that vacation request. I could go back and look at things that I have approved, right? So I'm looking at my workflow and I've approved some quotes and I just approved George's vacation right here. Or I can see things that I haven't taken action on because they're sitting in my workflow and they don't leave my workflow until I act upon them. So this is where, this is where Workflow is vastly superior to email because once I reply to an email, it's marked as read, it's gone off, and I have no idea what the next action should be just out of the box, right? Unless I set some kind of a reminder. But even then, it's not terribly helpful. But this tells me we haven't done this yet. We have a step that needs to be taken. And actually, this is an example. I think it is. Oh, I was going to I was going to dive into a, a a request that had multiple requests tied to it, Mike. But I don't know if this is one or not. Uh, we may not have yeah, time I, for that today. Yeah, we may not have time. Yeah. So, but, yeah, Terry Lanham, did do you have a something you wanted to say? Um, I did. I just wanted to sort of give a real world, um, just talk about an internal problem that we had. You know, we have people all over um, working in different locations and customers contact us for various reasons. And they, uh, maybe they want to cancel a contract or, or they were charged for something maybe they didn't want to be charged for. And so we have to give a credit for that. And so what had happened in the past, we didn't have a real clear way of handling it. And so a lot of times some of these things just sort of fell through and two months later we were figuring out, oh crap, we didn't take care of this. And so what we did is we created a workflow just to handle that. So what would happen is, is each person who had a workflow request that would go to a manager to be approved and then you could put reasons on there why you were issuing the credit what was going on. And so it was a way to make sure that number one, we tracked every request that we had, as well as, you know, we had an understanding of why it happened. 
And so that's sort of a front office uh, problem that we had. And I'm sure other companies have other problems that probably can be fixed in a similar way through workflow. And it then gives us the ability, um, Terry, as we know, to assess the number of times we've had to issue credits and the reason that we had to issue the credits, which can then help drive you, hopefully, to new processes that reduce that need to create those credits. So if you start to see trends um, and you know you have delivery issues of various kinds or whatever they are, you know, you can start to track. Um, we when when the COVID situation hit in March, and we knew that customers were going to be severely challenged by it, we tried to get ahead of that very quickly by adding some new features to Pulse. That was one side of the company. But we also started asking people when we talked to them or reaching out and asking them how operational their businesses were going to be. Were they going to have to shut down completely? Were they going to be partially up? Were they going to have essential people on site? Were they sending everybody home to work? And we actually started tracking that with a tiny little request we created in Synergy so we could quickly, quickly see anybody that was working with that customer would know if there were people in the office or they were only working one day a week or they had nobody in the office, uh, but the plant was open. Um, that, was, that was something we threw in place in, what, about an hour, Terry? We had less than an hour. We had that up and running, and we were tracking and looking at reports that could tell us who was who was operational and who wasn't. Because of course it affects then whether or not you're you're gonna be able to reach people. So that there there's a, a funky little request. We'll probably only use it for another month or two and it'll be done. But you know, that was that was another thing that, that we decided we could do with it. So lots of interesting ways once you start to understand how the system works, and you have someone that has a, has a bit of training and understands how requests are designed and how document types work and how people interact with all of that, you've already got the base data in Macola. So that all rolls in and you've got a set of data that's all there from the very beginning. You just now can augment it and add to it and connect it to actions and connect it to emails and connect it to the work that you need to collaborate with people on. So you know who's got the ball, and you know whether they've taken care of things in a timely fashion. And you can share it with people that are outside the organization. We haven't even talked about that, Mike, but there are portals that are available for your customers and your suppliers, too. And I didn't, I didn't bring up items at all, but, but your items are here as well, the, the things that you sell and that you make. So there's a connection to those. I didn't. I didn't even touch on that. I don't know if I have any items that I manage, but there's a database of of your Macola items here too. So yeah, there's the the products that my little coffee company sells. So that all becomes part of the part of the richness of this, if you will. So you now have a set of tools that really I think lets you move to the next level in collaborating and sharing information and you don't have to pick up the phone and you don't necessarily have to hold as many meetings um, in, in order to make sure that things are getting done when they need to get done. So it becomes a tool not just for management, but for for all of the organization, truly really does. So I don't know, Mike, that's about all I've got, unless there are other questions. Uh, we don't have any more questions that have come in. Uh, I think that we do have some questions, and I've responded back to people individually um, that Anne will get back with you to better understand your question or better understand um, uh, your exact needs. So we had a thank you request, a thank you question that came in. We appreciate it. Um, so you can get get in touch with any one of us, really, Mike, Anne, John, Terry. Um, all, all of us collaborate pretty well together, I think, which is a good thing. And a lot of it's facilitated by having synergy. So thanks for attending. I might, yeah, I might mention that, you know, to get everybody in the organization to adopt this is, um, is not an easy task and it requires a lot of top management leadership. 
So, you know, for people who are used to emails, that's what they use all day. Now you have to take that and put it into synergy and you have to manage things differently. Um, so it, it is a wonderful tool, but it does require everyone to buy in. And, you know, if you have a team of 20 people and 30 people and two of them refuse to participate, then um, it really disrupts disrupts everything. There are there are challenges to it, but we we all get comfortable with the way that we do things. So um, just for for those, I'm going to drag one thing over here that I hadn't really planned to do, but I'm I'm going to for those of you that really like staying in Outlook, I'm going to pull up Outlook for two seconds here. Um, Come on over here. Sorry, I need to drag it from another screen. Hang on one second. Some somebody gave us an and, and thank you, uh, uh, David. Somebody sent us a note here. It says if it's not in synergy, it never ha it never I, happened. I, you know, I had I had a guy I worked with like that. If he he'd have salespeople that would try to say we talked. I was like, is it in the synergy? And said no, it didn't happen. That is a, that is a yeah. fabulous thing. So I'm in. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm in Outlook here, right? I I am in Outlook. So this is this is there's a synergy office integration piece. So I'm actually in Outlook, but I can do virtually anything I want to from within Outlook if you're really married to Outlook and want to stay here. And yeah. I can see my workflow, I can do my work, I can create new accounts, I can do it all right within here. So now I'm just have basically a view and I can get in to look at any one of these different accounts. And again, now I'm into to Leahy data, so I'm not gonna go too far with it because it is ours, but I'm just saying, now I'm looking at account card from within Outlook. And there are people that wanna stay there because that's where they're comfortable. So, and I can interact with this just like I, because it is Synergy, just running within the Outlook shell. So that's, that's another- but The one feature that we really like is we're always working on specifications is, if an email came in with specs, it was a, a Word document, or if the specs were in the body of the document, attaching it to the request is is beautiful. Then nobody has to say, well, you, will you email me this yep. spec sheet, or will you email me the requirements uh, yep. if it needed to be quoted? It's just attached to it, and it's right there. Exactly. So it can be a drawing. Yep. Yeah, it can be a drawing. It does. It's not just. Um, could could be any could be anything. Could be anything. So it could be PDFs, could be JPEGs, could be virtually any kind of file that could be stored here. And there's a lot more we haven't talked about, folks. There's there's really a lot more here. Um, but well, today's just the fun fundamentals of, right. class. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, we'll close with that. I haven't got anything else. Terry, any other thoughts? I would say that if anyone out there has something that they think would be a good topic to cover that they might pass that on to us so that in our next meeting uh, maybe that would be one of the things we would do and for anybody who's on the call i'm just going to make a blatant pitch here for the the synergy anywhere user group that is on linkedin so if you use linkedin at all there is a synergy anywhere user group there that is exchanging ideas and and there are periodic meetings held um, and it's a, it's a great way to learn more about how others use the tool. So go out to LinkedIn and look for the Synergy Anywhere user group. And uh, we'd, we'd love to have you participate in that. So, all right, now I really am done. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, thanks everybody right. for joining. Stay safe. Yep. And uh, wear, your, wear your mask. We're in Ohio, we're still locked down in Ohio. So. <laughs> For those of you who may be in the high risk states, uh, you need to be need to wear your masks or stay home. Um, and then Anne can say yes, mother. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you. Thanks, later. everyone. Okay. Bye. 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 -bye.